I've always said it, crustaceans are better than people. People can't walk sideways, people don't have claws, and I would sooner make friends with a hermit crab than with this guy. Say it with me in the comments everyone. Crustaceans are better than people. Crustacean and nation, two words that rhyme. So what if we put them together? What if I made a whole world full of crab people? And with this question burnt into my very core, I opened up the most technologically advanced software I owned, the 2008 video game, Spore. Spore is a life simulation game full of endless possibility. But one thing the game doesn't like you to do is create a creature that walks sideways. Regardless of this, I did my very best to create the perfect crab specimen. And after much fine tuning, just a second, nothing to see here, nothing at all, nothing to see, I came up with this. Now, I know what you're thinking, it's perfect already, but I reckoned I could do even better. And without further ado, I named him Mr. Pinchy and set out into the world to evolve. Mr. Pinchy was feeling very adventurous, and it wasn't long before he began to discover some strange things in his surroundings. On the ground was what seemed to be the dismembered body of some sort of fruit. What kind of a world was this that he'd found himself in? He decided to do some more travelling to find out, and eventually stumbled across some other species. First, a nest of sea cucumbers. Interesting, thought Mr. Pinchy, but crabs have very poor attention spans, and after getting bored he continued on his journey, stumbling next across a nest of forest pears. Weird, thought Mr. Pinchy, before getting bored again and immediately moving on. Some more travelling later and he came across a nest of plums. Lovely, thought Mr. Pinchy, before getting bored again and walking away. With all this walking and travelling, Mr. Pinchy was beginning to get hungry. But as his small crab stomach rumbled, he realised something. Mr. Pinchy was surrounded by a buffet of different food-based creatures. It was his lucky day, and he began to chow down on his favourite food, sea cucumber. Admittedly, Mr. Pinchy did get a bit carried away, but after wiping out the majority of the sea cucumber population, he went back home and it was time to evolve. Just give me a second here, just doing some admin, okay. Big improvements needed to be made if I wanted Mr. Pinchy to eventually rule the land, and I started by giving him some arms and some proper crab claws. With his new arms waving in the air as he scuttled side to side, I knew that I was on the right track and Mr. Pinchy headed back over to the forest pears to begin his next meal. But as he got there, he looked directly into the forest pears' kind eyes. And at that moment, Mr. Pinchy's tiny crab heart tripled in size, and he decided that rather than eat them, he would befriend them instead. Not only did this increase Mr. Pinchy's heart size, but his brain grew bigger as well. And with his improved IQ, I sent him out further afield to discover more of what this world has to offer. Within a few moments, Mr. Pinchy was face to face with a group of long boys, who proceeded to tell him about Long Earth. Then Mr. Pinchy met a group of aggressive plums. He likes the other plums better. And finally, he stumbled across another nest of pears, one of which claimed to be called Fruitius Maximus. What a strange name. But as Fruitius Maximus began to tell him of his story, Mr. Pinchy became bored and was distracted by what seemed to be a huge mountain moving in the distance. Upon closer inspection, Mr. Pinchy was struck with horror. It was one of the crab species' biggest nemesis, a whelk. In real life, whelks may look innocent, but in reality they're doing a load of horrible stuff behind the scenes, committing tax fraud and siphoning charity income into their personal bank accounts. This whelk was no different, apart from the fact that this whelk was giant, and that meant it was dangerous too. Mr. Pinchy ran away as fast as his little crab legs would carry him, but the whelk was tenacious, and if it wasn't for his incredible sneaking abilities, and the fact that the whelk was distracted by Fruitius Maximus and the other pairs, he may not have escaped with his life intact. If Mr. Pinchy was going to defeat his arch nemesis, he had a long way to go. And after some upgrades, just a second here, let me just add this here and this here, he set about levelling up by beating up various other creatures in the surrounding area. These fights went so successfully that Mr. Pinchy was feeling pretty happy about himself, and he proceeded to jump and flip about with joy. Even the rain couldn't get his spirits down. But after jumping and skipping about a bit too far, he once again came across the giant whelk. 
As before, the Welk charged with ferocious pace, and Mr. Pinchy was forced into another retreat. Once again, he barely escaped with his life, and I realized I would need to give Mr. Pinchy some even more serious upgrades. It was at this point, I knew it was time. Being a normal crab would no longer be good enough. Mr. Pinchy would have to enter... Hermit Crab Mode. His shell was majestic, far more graceful than that filthy giant whelk. Furthermore, it seemed all that rain that Mr. Pinchy had been skipping about in earlier had resulted in flowers and moss growing around his back. He was looking cuter than ever, but as he set out again to show his new appearance to the world, he had yet another encounter with the giant whelk. Thank God Mr. Pinchy was so sneaky, and after a short chase scene, he escaped for a third time. But then, just as he was settling in back home, ah! the giant whelk had followed him back to the crab's nest, and Mr. Pinchy and his family were driven from their house. That blasted whelk was gonna pay for what he'd done, thought Mr. Pinchy, but how would he ever defeat it? It was so giant, and so whelk. He couldn't do this alone, and with that, he decided to search for a new ally. Luckily for him, the flowers on Mr. Pinchy's back made him so charming that everyone wanted to be friends. Unfortunately, nobody around these parts seemed strong enough. That is, until a rogue stepped into view. In Spore, a rogue is a super species with almost 10 times the health of a normal creature. Mr. Pinchy had struck gold, and with the rogue by his side, all future scuffles and fights were over in an instant. The rogue's fighting style was like nothing he'd ever seen before. All he had to do was sit back, and the rogue would rip his enemies apart in front of his eyes. Before long, Mr. Pinchy was ready to move into tribal stage. And then the game crashed and I had to play through the whole thing again, which I'm not salty about at all. But eventually, the time came. Mr. Pinchy discovered fire, set up a small tribe, and began to work on his plans for world domination. These plans were immediately put aside though, as on the horizon, the silhouette of the giant whelk appeared once more. Should Mr. Pinchy attack now? Was he strong enough yet to take the giant whelk down? But before he could answer these questions, a new village of pears was established nearby. It was the Pink Village. This gave Mr. Pinchy an idea. Although he hadn't really been listening to Fruitius Maximus' story, as far as he understood it, the Pears were some sort of freedom-fighting group. He also knew that Pears loved nothing more than royalty-free music. Maybe if Mr. Pinchy made friends with the surrounding Pear villagers, he'd be able to get them to help him defeat the giant Welk. Without wasting another second, he set up his own shop full of didgeridoos, handed them out to his crab family, and they skipped over to the Pink Village for a crab concert. The Pink Village were impressed, and they gave the crabs tens across the board. The plan was going well, and more pet villagers moved into the area to hear Mr. Pinchy's beautiful royalty-free music. Now there was the Green Village, the Lavender Village, and the Cyan Village, who were about to be attacked by the giant whelk. Watch out, Cyan Village, no! This was Mr. Pinchy's chance. If his tribe and the Cyan Village worked together, they might just have a shot of taking the whelk down. He and the other crabs rushed across as quickly as their little crab legs would carry them, and surrounded the whelk as best they could. With both tribes attacking at once, the Welk knew it was outmatched, and it proceeded to try and make a getaway. Mr. Pinchy and the other crabs gave chase. They wouldn't let him get away. All Mr. Pinchy had done so far was run away himself, and now the tables were turned, he had to capitalize. The giant Welk was unbelievably fast, but before long, things took a turn for the best. In its panic, the Welk had headed straight from the Cyan village towards the Green village, and both tribes together would be able to corner it again. The Welk was now trapped, as both Cyan Village, Crab Village, and Green Village began to attack it as a team. But, as it turned out, the Green Village weren't quite as accommodating as Mr. Pinchy had thought. Rather than being helpful, they were actually annoyed that Mr. Pinchy had chased the giant Welk in their direction. And, instead of joining the fight, the Green Village began attacking Mr. Pinchy and his friends. As the Welk continued to be whittled down, Mr. Pinchy's tribe fell to the Green Village one by one. It was a race against time. Who would drop first? And then, with one last roar, the Welk finally keeled over. It was defeated. 
Mr. Pinchy had achieved his goal. As the Green Village kept on attacking, Mr. Pinchy closed his adorable crab eyes in satisfaction. Sure, the Crustacean Nation never finished taking over the world, but they sure did finish taking over that whelk. The pairs went on to be very prosperous. Apparently, they were fighting a war with some bananas or something at the time, and that's why they were so on edge. But of course, Mr. Pinchy didn't know this as he hadn't been paying attention. As for the Crustacean Nation, they ended up in some very tasty shellfish platters at a bunch of pear restaurants. And the other item on the menu was, of course, giant whelk soup. And that's the end of the story. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>